So full disclosure, we got this idea from the Buff Dudes. They had another video about this doing a DIY, and I'm going to put it down in the description in case if you want to watch theirs, because theirs might be a little bit better than ours, but we're still going to have fun either way. So I hope you enjoy. So welcome back, Drifters. It's me, Carpenter Kyle. And today I got Austin here. What we're doing... Well, I don't have a cool name. <laughs> or Arbor Austin. Either way. Uh, so what we're doing today is something a little different. As you all know, we're all kind of stuck in quarantine. Everybody's panicking. And if you know us, we love the gym. I know we're normally car guys, but we also like working with wood every now and again. That sounded wrong, but you know what I mean. So what we're doing today is we're building a power rack. Because all the gyms are closed. We need to work out. We need to de-stress and get rid of all this crap that's going on right now. So... Us two bumbling buffoons are going to go ahead and attempt to build a power rack with a whole bunch of wood. So, this is going to be an interesting day. You excited? I'm very excited. I feel like a real man when I wear this outfit. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's oh, going to be interesting. Gotta get you with that quick drop. <laughs> oh, he's ready to go. So, the first thing we got to do is really we got to get our wood together and we're going to make some cuts. We're going to put all the stuff down in the description if you guys want to build this stuff too. As far as all the supplies you need and everything like that. So... We're just going to get into cutting. All right, so normally we're about safety third, but when you're dealing with the circular saw like this, we don't want to lose any fingers or anything. So first off, we got safety glasses, cool sunglasses for cool guys only, uh, welding gloves just in case so that we don't chop our fingers off. I got some mechanics gloves too so I don't get splinters uh, when we're bringing it in after it's been cut. Here in protection, yeah, that's all you really need. And uh, half a brain. Have a brain, no smooth brain. Wrinkle brain. Basically, don't be a dum-dum like us. Carpentry with Corona. <laughs> We're going to be using the Sawblade Cotillator 3000, and uh, yeah, it's quite effective for about $100. Hey, it works. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> but first, our super scientific drawing of what we need to build. Yes, that's right. This is incredibly scientific and incredibly accurate. So first, what's the first cut we should do? Ob Austin. Ob Um... What's the drawing say? So we got, we need, <laughs> well first, before we make a cut, you gotta pick the perfect wood. You gotta hold on to it, feel it. Try not to get a splinter, cause you're going against the grain. And listen. It sounds pretty good to me. Okay, so first cut. 84 inches. All right. It doesn't matter which one? Doesn't matter which one, just pick one. Oh, oh do you want me to do the first cut just to demonstrate? Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> first, you gotta pick up your wood. Just do a couple curls. Just make sure that the wood's nice and solid. It feels pretty good to me. So then we're just gonna take the wood and we're gonna shove it in the saw. No! And just cut it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we're not gonna cut it. So we gotta measure it. And you probably shouldn't measure it in here, but you know what? We're not geniuses. It's not up against the. Yeah, That's okay. okay. Just gonna take this here. We're gonna find our seven foot mark, 84 inches. Take our nice, wonderful little wooden pencil and get it close. That's a wonderful line. Look at that. Oh, look at how straight that is. Oh my That's exactly what we want. Now I'm going to actually fix that. <laughs> That's a better line. Then all we got to do is take a straight edge and make sure it's straight. Do you want to know the best part about this square? It's made by Ron Swanson. <laughs> Boom. There's the line. Kind That's of. a line. It's a shitty one, but it's a line. <laughs> now I'm just going to take that line and we're going to line it up. Let's measure a thousand times and fuck it up anyway. <laughs> Rather cut to where there's excess than less, because other you can always cut more away. You can't add wood. So we're going to say that's pretty good. Next thing is just make sure it's on here real good. Yeah, nice and tight. Mm -hmm. And hearing protection. <laughs> and i got to make sure this thing's like this. This is not proper technique <laughs> at all. Do not do this. Okay, we're good? I think so. Okay. I wonder who I am. <laughs> I don't know. Here we go. Oh, that smells so good. That works. Oh, I love that smell. Let's double check the uh, length. It's a little bit short. Now, oh, fuck my good. ankle. Yeah, I'm good. So, mistakes were made. Um, when we had it over there, you can kind of see this is at a higher elevation than over there. So when Kyle thought he had it pushed down, it really wasn't all the way down. That's why we got that cockeyed cut. Luckily, we're going to take that messed up one and cut it into two of the pieces we need, the 41 inches or the 43 and 41 inch, because it's 84. Um, so now we got two planks. These are four, well, two by twos, right? 
Yep. Yeah, two by two, so two of those makes a four by four. Or actually, four. it's a two by four. So but it's yeah. two, either way, either way. <laughs> four inches now from here, so over there, and now it's level. So now we're going to have a good cut, and we shouldn't have an issue. Yeah, hopefully. So let's get to cutting, as they say. I don't know who says that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That is proper slapping technique. That shit slaps. Okay, that should be pretty damn close. I'm gonna make sure it's flush down here. We good? Flush. Okay, here we go. Moment of truth. Let's do a quick measurement. And not bad. Measure it. I think that's pretty close. That's right at seven feet. Hey. Boom. Now we just gotta rinse and repeat. I will say this job goes a lot smoother when you have an extra helping hand. So if you do have somebody to help you out with this, be sure to give them a try. So we've got all the wood cut. Everything's down here except for our little miter joints, which we needed to go get some more wood because yeah. we ran out. So we had to go to Lowe's again. We went in there. We stood too close to a lady. She got upset. And now we're back here. <laughs> yeah. Like too close. We were like four feet distance. Sorry, not six. <laughs> we literally fought the Rona for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> so we're just going to take these little logs here and we're going to turn them into smaller logs, but with little angle cuts on that thing. Like this one, this test one we did to yeah. check the angle, make sure it're good. We so had then to you make butt sure. that up like that, connects to another one, and it makes it strong. That log got strength. It's all about triangles. And we're going to angle the crap out of it. So cutting this thing into little triangles is kind of tricky. You want to get a pyramid shape, but if you do it wrong, you may end up with a trapezoid. So it's uh, something to definitely pay attention to and watch your fingers because it is very dangerous. So we got all the wood cut, and now we're going to move on to drilling some holes. Yeah, so we got this nifty little tool called the speed bore. I don't know if you can read that. Or the drill -a later And the max speed, because like max speeding rods. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, it's got this little thing that will bring the hole in and center it. That way you're not just using one of these and kind of going all over the place. This is an inch and a quarter, so that way we can get our pipe through just fine for our safety bars and our pull-up bar. So now we're going to drill into our eight-foot poles and um, make 56 holes because we got to do each one. We got to go all the way down. It's 12 inches up, make a, the first hole, then every four and a half inches you add a hole. So it's for people who are short, people who are tall, anyone can do it. Holes on holes on holes. Tony. Howdy. Howdy. <laughs> <laughs> Marking stick, ahoy. Oh, and one thing, if you don't know, a four by four is not actually four inches, it's three and a half. So we have to go to the center of that, which I think, being the smooth brain that I am, I think that's one and three quarters of an inch would be center, maybe. I'm gonna have to do some math, we'll be back. So it was an inch and three quarters to center line. We just made sure to draw these all out so we know where to go. We're just going center of the X. Should be good. And Austin has the honors of drilling the first hole. Do I start at the 12? You can start at whichever one you want. So we put under here, Maybe we put we a board though. below it. Basically, this should help catch the bit and also keep it from splintering on the back side. So here we go. Nice and slow, you got it. Careful, don't hurt yourself oh. now. Okay, back it out. I think you got there. Ooh, careful, don't break your wrist. <laughs> oh my god. Whoa, careful. What the hell? Uh, does it have a reverse? You just gotta, go. yeah, it does. Whoa, careful. <laughs> you want me to help you out, bro? Yeah. <laughs> it's good. Ow, fuck. It's like stuck in there. Oh fuck, man. That's insane. Well, it went through and only backed uh, a little uh, splinter out. That'll work just fine. Yeah, got a nice little hole. Woo! Yeah! Austin discovered a little solution to our problem. So we were going too slow. Yeah, we were being little bitches about it. You gotta have a little bit more behind it. Gotta be confident. Now go. Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah. Way better. Way easier not breaking wrists. Yeah, don't break your wrists like us. That'd be bad. And hey, look at that. We got a nice little hole. Wow. Things were going really smoothly until I realized that we drilled holes in the wrong place and had to cut a whole new board. But it's alright because we won't let a simple setback set us back. We'll just keep moving forward. Alright, so don't tell anybody, it's a little secret, but it's the next day. Uh, I kind of screwed up and got the wrong size corner brackets. What we needed were these little suckers here. Uh, again, link in the description, we needed 14 of these. I got ones that were just way too big. For some reason I was thinking 4 inches because it was a 4x4, four four, but 4x4s four are really 3.5. So, you know, mistakes were made. But we got the right piece now, so what we're going to do is we're going to work on joining these pieces together. This is going to be one side of the rack. This long piece here is going to be the 43 inch, and then these are the big 7 foot sections. And what we're doing is we're taking this little bracket, we're stuffing it in the corner here, we're going to screw it in, and then we're going to run a plate along the top side. Plates look like this. Uh, again, these are very cheap. Link description. They just go right up on top of there, just like that. Just adds a little bit extra support. And then we're going to take one of these corner brackets and basically shove it in here so it looks like that. So that's what I'm going to do. I have to do this like 30 times, so I'm just going to get to work. And uh, yeah, pretty soon we should be uh, getting that much closer. So let's get to it. So what I'm going to do here is take my uh, two-inch screw. And we're going to put it through each of those holes. We're going to make sure this is as square as possible. And, you know, it may not be perfect, but we can sand it to where it's perfectly level. Uh, and we're going to get it as close as we can. Drill all those in and pop it in there. So when it comes to squaring this thing up, it can be kind of tricky. Because a lot of times the ground isn't going to be level. So I'm trying to do it as close as I can with my hand. And just center this as best as I can as well. There we go. I'm just going to do one in each side so that way I can adjust it a little bit as need be. There we go. So now we got a little bit of adjustment and I can make sure it's good and square before we do the rest of them. So what I did here is I used this little shim to kind of help level it out. It's nice and flush. So I should be able to just drill these in nice and easy. After I finished up that corner, all I did was repeat the same process on the other two and put the plates on top. Pretty easy. So now we got that done, so the next thing we got to do is the corners. Uh, those are pretty simple. We're just going to pre-drill a few holes and then drill in our 3-inch screws. These bad boys. So we should be good to go. So what I'm going to do here is I've got this little shim here to basically level it out. Get it as level as I can, and then we're going to drill two pilot holes. We're going to have one go in like this. And then we're going to have one go in like this. And then afterwards, we're going to take our drill and it should line in and go through something like this so we still get a good bite. So let's do it. There we go. All right, that's one in. Cool. Then we'll do the other side. And then we'll do one there and then one on each bottom. one done so all I had to do is repeat this process for the other corners but sometimes with these troubling times that we're in it's nice to just take a moment take a break spend some time with the dogs even if I'm just building the rack you know it's amazing how much they can actually help out and relieve in some stress so that's one side now I just got to repeat this for the other side and then move it inside wish me luck damn this thing's heavy so maneuvering this big hunk of wood was actually a lot harder than it looked and at one point, I swear I thought I was going to separate my shoulder from its joint. It was pretty bad. Yeah, that was my shoulder. That hurt my shoulder. There we go. One side down. One more to go. So y'all see this dog? If y'all know, that's Apollo. He's a good dog most of the times. But the other day, he did this. So we figure it's as good of a time as any to rip out the carpet. So this is actually going to turn into the gym room. 
we're gonna be pulling up all this carpet and laying down like foam insulation. So this is where we're gonna build it. You like screwing up carpet, Polly? You like doing that, yeah? You, is that what you enjoy doing, bud? Yes, I do. Okay, so now I got it propped up inside the room. It's just kind of standing up here. I'm gonna work on doing the corners, which is gonna be kind of tricky just because I'm doing this by myself now and it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of tricky, but we're gonna get it done. I'll show you what we gotta do. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure three and a half inches from the top, place that there, because then the last board's gonna go up here. And we're gonna do the same thing on this side over here. We're just gonna put this here and then put the board up and it'll make these two together right there. So we should be good. I'm just gonna try drilling one of these in real quick. Look there. Okay, so I mounted those up there basically right in line with where this piece is. So this line's up there so the bar should fit there. It's about three and a half inches. I did the same thing on this one here. So now I'm gonna just try to get them all lined up and uh, put them together. So let's do it. Okay, I'm gonna set this up here. I'm gonna set this on. Just up there. Okay, okay. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Shit. Ah, fucking hell. Oh, wow, that was terrible. I just put a huge dent in the drywall. Woo! Don't do that shit. Oh, man. This is why it helps to have extra hands. Fuck. So I decided that doing the bottom was probably a little bit smarter. <laughs> Don't do what I do sometimes. Sometimes I make some really stupid mistakes. This time it cost me a bit of drywall, so... Uh, what are you gonna do? So instead I'm gonna do the nice and easy route and just zip it in here. Now I should be able to get this lined up a little bit better. Hopefully. Okay, I think I need to triangulate this thing a little bit. If you wear glasses, I'm pretty sure you can relate to this struggle. It's fucking glasses, dude. Okay, but as you know, I don't let that stop me from finishing the job. Okay, that's good. Now, now it shouldn't be weak at all. Now we should be able to get this corner. Thing is a lot harder than it looks, I'll tell you that much. Especially if you're doing it by yourself. Woo! Okay, so we'll try to balance this up here and not drop it again. At least now I don't have to worry about that thing falling. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take my angles, put them up in the corners, and we should be good as far as this side goes. Now do the front side. So this is kind of crazy because this thing without the center support, look, my fan actually clears it. So, hmm. But when I put the center beam up, it's gonna sit right up here. Well, I guess you can't see that. It's gonna set up like right up here and the fan's just gonna get in the way. So, unfortunately, it looks like I'm off by just a, a slight, slight bit. So, yeah, it's gonna be interesting to say the least, but we'll have to figure something out. But I'll figure that out as we go. I need to get the frame finished up top. And then this thing will pretty much be done. So, feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good. That almost works. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, wow, that actually fits brilliantly. That's nice. Not common that that happens, but it did. Well, happy accident. Uh huh. Okay, a little extra structure. Cool. And there you have it. Okay, so let me show you how we're gonna make the uh, things that hold the barbells. Basically, I've got like five little different things here. It's a bunch of piping, the black pipe. It's uh, basically just like an iron pipe that you get. Home Depot, Lowe's, any of those kind of hardware stores. And what we're doing is we're taking this and then what we're gonna do is this is what's gonna run through here. We're gonna have a coupler, which we're gonna use for one end. So there'll be a coupler on here. 
you just kind of screw the coupler on there just kind of just like that so you get that on there then you're going to take this little piece here which is again all these parts are down in the description i'll have it all laid out there too so that way you know exactly which piece to go where it'll look like this when you put it together then you take this little spot here flap that doohickey on there tighten that little sucker up like that see how i got all country i'm not country at all not one bit not one bit but that's what happens when you start doing stuff like this it's all right so now you got this on here like that you basically take this through here you can slap it through and then you take your cap and you tighten that on the back and that's what's going to hold this thing together now one of the things i'm going to do just because i like to make sure these things are on here good is i'm going to come back at it with a pipe wrench now this is a pipe wrench if you're not familiar otherwise known as like a monkey wrench or something like that a beat em up stick whatever you want to call it these things are great for this kind of stuff i use them with automotive stuff too just because it's got these cool teeth that like when they go to lock it's good for getting out like strip bolts and shit like that but anyway this ain't a car video this is a making dumb shit video <laughs> so and then we're just gonna lop this on here on one side we'll tighten this sucker up and then what i'm gonna end up doing is getting pliers for the other side so we're just gonna take our monkey wrench got pliers on the back side we're just gonna go until we get it tight uh, there we go that should be on there nice and tight that ain't gonna go anywhere cool now that's in there and this thing's gonna be nice and solid it ain't backing out it ain't coming out and this thing is where your barbell is gonna sit and it should hold it just fine so if you look right there you can see how it's set up it's just that little coupler the piece in between the chair holder thing on the outside and then this on the back and it ain't going anywhere there may be a little bit of play in there and i could probably tighten it up a little bit but honestly this thing's going to set in here and that ain't going nowhere that should hold our barbell just fine all right the last bit's the safety bars this is just another iron pipe this one's five feet tall and then i'm going to attach a 90 degree coupler two of these little butt ends and a four inch pipe basically that's just to make a grip you don't necessarily need that but it's good to have it on there just to keep it so that way it doesn't back out on you when you're doing this. So I'm just going to put these on. Obviously I can come back with a wrench, but for right now I'm just going to do them hand tight. Because these things aren't as important that they're on there super tight. These are only here if you end up dropping the weight, which fortunately we're pretty good about not doing that. But if you happen to do that, it's good to have it here just in case because it can come in handy. That's for sure. So I end up with a nice little handle. Makes it real easy to slide in and out. Just gonna take that, pop it in through here. Basically just line it up with the hole here, wherever we're gonna put it when we actually use it. So mind you, this is a little bit long. I'm gonna have to move the rack away from the window, but it's gonna have enough room that it can push all the way through without actually having a chance of falling out. So, and just to prove that this thing is actually level, I'm gonna put a level between these two things here just to show that we actually got it pretty close. I thought it was gonna be really off, but believe it or not, it's actually pretty good. Take a look. For being a very cheap job, I would say that that's pretty damn level. So yeah, I mean, it's it may not look like it for, to the naked eye. It may look off, but it's definitely level. Um, and we have that going all the way up, so you can basically adjust these to the inside or to the back side, whichever way, depending if you're squatting, if you're benching or shoulder pressing, stuff like that. Um, and obviously the different levels so we can obviously lower it and bring it up. We can do all that fun stuff So guys the only other thing that I really need to do is basically make a pull-up bar for this thing Which I was just gonna drill across this and hang this thing up here because then this could be our basically our pull-up bar uh, the only thing is This fans kind of in the way and if we need to end up moving this rack around I don't want to permanently have anything done. So I'm gonna just like drill the hole for it We'll slide it through so that way we got a spot for it We'll just see how it does. So yeah. So now it's time for the final step. Drilling the holes for the pull-up bar. Let's get it. Okay. Oh, fuck. Ah. Shit, man. Fuck. Oh, fuck, that hurt. Oh, that hurt my wrist. That really hurt my wrist. Be very careful doing this because wow, that thing like jerked. And now my hand is, uh, I think I may have pulled something in my pinky or something. 
that's not fun so all I'm doing now is I'm measuring the distance between the top to here which is about 11 and a half I just want to get it close yeah okay so we'll just aim for there and adjust as need be Fingers crossed that actually fits. Ooh, I might have trouble getting this up here. A little close to the wall. Whoops. Well, let this be a lesson. Make sure that you got space on your walls. <laughs> Otherwise, you run into this issue, which, oy, not fun. After a little bit more manipulation, I think I got it. Now, obviously, you'll see that this is gonna be an issue because of where the fan is, but, it would appear as though my holes are lined up and it works. Oh, that feels so good. Getting the pump again. Oh, thank God. Oh, this thing's going to be awesome. So I may not have thought of everything. I mean, who would have thought that this ceiling fan would get in the way? I mean, it, it just, it was one of those things I just wasn't thinking. Something to consider if you're doing it. But luckily, I'll be able to fix it. I'm probably just going to end up replacing it with a shallow fan. Because uh, I've got about 12 inches of clearance between the roof. But the other thing is if I do pull-ups on this side, I won't be hitting it as easily as if I'm on the other side flipped around. So that's kind of what we're going to work with. So overall, I'm very, very happy with the squat rack, minus all of my own personal errors. I would have to say that it's very solid. I haven't had a chance to test it out yet because guess what? So because of this whole Rona thing, I can't find weights anywhere. And everybody that does have them, they want an arm and a leg for it. You know, it's, it's, it's ridiculous because, you know, I was trying to save money by doing this and now everybody wants to charge astronomical numbers just for a barbell and a set of weights. Come on, guys. So I'm going to have to come up with an ingenious plan for how we're going to create some weights. But in the meantime, body weight's just going to have to do. So I guess there's really nothing else to do besides have a good workout. Oh, I can't tell you how much I miss this stuff. It's great. Millions aren't that special, but they still work. The reason we get them all the time is back in boot camp. I can't wait to start squatting this baby. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Sure as hell know I did. Definitely need it during these tough times. Hope y'all are staying safe out there with this quarantine. And look out for one another. Call your friends if you haven't heard from them in a while. Just give them a phone call. Make sure they're doing okay because physical health isn't the only issue out there. You gotta keep the mind right. Anyway guys, <laughs> shit. I'll see y'all in the next one. Have a great day and remember, keep it nice and easy. And I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>